I'm here with Bonnie Specker, epidemiologist, who is going to give us an update on the COVID-19 situation in our area, state, nation, and the world over the last week. Bonnie, what has been happening with COVID-19 in our area and, and across the, the U.S. and world? Thanks, Chelsea. Um, I don't think it's been looking very good. Uh, here, this, this is the Brookings data. And it's by week, so these are number of cases per week. And as you can see, we're pretty much in exponential growth here. It's really starting to take off. Um, this past week, we had almost double the number of cases that we had the week before. And we're close to the 4,000 cases um, total. So quite a bit above substantial spread and definitely heading in the wrong direction. If you look at who, you know, what age groups these cases are occurring in this past week, this is from the last week. We don't have any, we have this one case in the 70 plus. This is the first case in several weeks. We didn't have any at all in the 60 to 69 age group, but we do have quite a bit in these younger ages. Um, you know, 23 cases that were under the age of, or 19. And then we have um, quite a few in, in these older ages too, all the way up to 50 to 59, where there were 13 cases or a 4% increase. So children and maybe their parents and whoever their parents are hanging around with, if they're not in that 50 to 59 age group, if you look at hospitalizations, that's also increased quite a bit this past week. We had six hospitalizations um, last week or the week before we only had one. So we've had a total of 104 hospitalizations. We haven't had any deaths, but with this increase, you would expect deaths to occur later. They're off by a couple weeks. And I wanted to show this. This map is off of the Department of Health dashboard, the COVID dashboard. And the darker the county um, is shaded, the more cases that they have. And the dark ones are substantial. So you can see that Brookings County is currently in substantial spread. And so is Minneaha and pretty much the whole eastern part of South Dakota. Now, there have been variants identified in the eastern part of South Dakota. The UK and South African variants have actually been identified in Brookings County, which could be possibly the cause for that increase that we're seeing in the number of cases. Both of these variants are much more contagious than the original SARS-CoV-2 virus. Um, so you have to you know, be extra cautious as far as spreading it. And the UK variant is also thought to make people significantly more ill. So um, we need to watch out for that. If you look at the state, you don't see as big of an increase statewide. And again, that's because I think it's limited over to that Eastern part of the state, but the cases are increasing. Um, it went down a little bit this past week compared to the week before, but you can see that it was running closer to this cutoff for substantial spread in the last two weeks. We've been up a little bit. So 117,000 cases, close to 118. If you look at the hospitalization data, this is starting to swing up. Um, we had 112 new hospitalization emissions this past week compared to 73 in the week before. Um, the number currently hospitalized is also up. That's this blue line. This purplish line is, is the hospital admissions per week. But you can see that the currently hospitalized is also starting to go into an upward swing. If you look at deaths, we had 11 deaths this past week, um, nine the week before. 
it's staying relatively stable. You wouldn't, as, like I said, with Brookings, you wouldn't really expect to see deaths going up right when cases and hospitalizations go up. There is that lag period. If you look at the vaccination data, 37% of South Dakota has received at least one dose of the vaccine and 30% of Brookings County. As far as fully vaccinated, we have 24% of South Dakota being fully vaccinated compared to 19% of Brookings County. And again, you can see these pods. I think I mentioned that last week, these sharp increases are the weeks that there were pods out at Swiftel. And so there's a lot of pods scheduled for the near future. Oh, and that's one thing I wanted to mention, the Department of Health announced today that they're gonna open up vaccinations to everyone 16 and older, or older than 16 as of April 4th. So people should pay attention to that. But even if um, an individual doesn't get vaccinated at the pod, they can also contact their health provider and schedule an appointment to get vaccinated as well. So they don't necessarily have to wait for that. No, no, they don't. And there's also four pharmacies actually in Brookings. Brothers, Hy-Vee, Walmart, and Lewis all are providing vaccines. Now, as far as statewide, um, the percent of the populations that, that have received at least one vaccine, it's very age dependent. Again, we, it was opened up for those older at-risk people first, and now we're, we will be opening up everything or the Department of Health will be opening up everything. But 74% of the 80 and older group have been vaccinated and it drops down here to 17% of the 20 to 29 year olds. This group is probably people that are at high risk that have medical conditions. Otherwise they wouldn't really be qualified to have been vaccinated yet. Um, and this is just telling you how to read it. You know, these numbers here, 55.6% of the people aged 60 to 69 have been vaccinated. And this is as of today, March 31st. If you look at the percent of the population that's ever tested positive, um, the yellow bars are South Dakota, the blue bars are Brookings County, and we do have a much lower percent of the population that's tested positive as of today. 12% um, of South Dakotans in that 60 to 69 year age group have tested positive for COVID compared to only 7.9% of Brookings residents. So that's good. Um, but you can see that the highest age groups that have tested positive is this 20 to 29 and 40 to 49. And this really 20 to 49 year age group are the ones that have a high percent. If you look at case fatality rates, and this is the percent of the people who die that have gotten the disease. Um, overall, it's around 1.7%. And if you look at the 60 to 69 year olds, this is saying 2% of the people who test positive for COVID ended up, have ended up dying from it. And that goes up to 20.6% in that 80 plus age group. And it's less than 1% in these younger ones. So it's not as fatal, but there are deaths um, in these younger ages. This is more in the range of the flu um, fatality rates right here. And one of the things I wanted to do today was just briefly go over a summary of how South Dakota compares to other states nationally. And the red, I highlighted things red where we're in the worst part and green if we're in the best part. Um, if you start with testing, since that's where it all starts, we actually have are tied with Michigan with for having the highest percent positive tests in the last seven days. 
Um, we're 45th highest for the number of new tests. So you want this percent positivity down. You want it low. This is that number that the World Health Organization says should be less than 5%. And you want to be able, you want to be doing a lot of tests to detect those positive cases. And we're pretty close to the bottom as far as the number of new tests that have been reported per population size, um, 960. Just to compare that, um, here we have Vermont with over 10,000. And the US average is, a little, is over 2,000. Vermont's over 10,000, sorry. If you look at the cases, we have the 14th highest reported new cases in the last seven days. Um, last week, I think we were down at like 20th something. So we are actually moving up nationally. We have 158 cases per 100,000 in this past week. The US is at 135. Michigan is having a very big outbreak currently. Um, they're at 379. There are 39 countries that have a higher rate than South Dakota, just comparing um, South Dakota to different countries. Overall, from the beginning of the pandemic, we actually have the second highest total reported number of cases. The only state beating us, if you wanna call it beating us, is North Dakota. They have the highest rate of cases. Hawaii has the lowest. There are three countries outside of the United States that have a higher rate than South Dakota, and Andorra actually has the highest, 15,000 per 100,000. If you look at hospitalizations, we have the 18th highest number of patients currently hospitalized. So although you know, we don't think of those hospitalization numbers as that, that high compared to what they were last November, they are high. Uh, and you can see that in these numbers. As far as deaths, in the last seven days, we're right smack in the middle. Um, pretty much there's a four-way tie there. And if you look at all total deaths from the entire pandemic, we have the eighth highest reported deaths in the United States. And the Czech Republic is actually the only country that has a higher rate than South Dakota. Now, vaccines, this is the one part where we get to a green, you know, something that's good. Um, <clears throat> initially, we were high for having the number of people partially vaccinated. This week we've dropped down to 24th. A lot of other states are really gearing up their vaccination programs. South Dakota did that rather quickly when they first started. And that's why we're actually the third highest number of fully vaccinated people, because it's a month lag between that first vaccine and the other one. But we're doing good with the total number of fully vaccinated um, people. Now, if you look at um, the US, these are the cases as of today, or actually as of yesterday, we have 31 million cases. The, the numbers have gone up from 404 last week, or the previous week to 460 this past week. So a slight increase. And the deaths are at about 564,000. And they've, they dropped just a little bit at 7,255 this past week compared to about 7,500 the week before. Um, this is a high number. If you think about it, that's 1,000 deaths a day. You know, if, if you think of when people, like when there used to be a plane wreck and 300 people died, how shocked people would be. You know, this is like three or four plane wrecks a day for weeks at a time. So I think people are forgetting that. Worldwide, there is a quite large increases happening. Um, Four million cases this past week compared 
to 3.5 million new cases the week before. So this is, is really taking off. And this is important because we need to get vaccines out there to the world because the more cases there are out there, the more likely there's going to be mutations that the vaccines we have won't work against. So, you know, we're, the world is in this together. It's not going to help if one country is completely vaccinated and the rest of the world is just running rampant. We, we need to get this controlled at a worldwide level. If you look at the deaths worldwide, this is also increasing um, 2.85 or 2.8 million deaths worldwide. There were 69,000 deaths last week compared to 63,000 the week before. Um, so just to summarize a little bit that, you know, there's new cases and hospitalizations that are on the rise in Brookings County, and we really need to be diligent about that. Given that the variants that have been identified here, we really need a high percentage of the population immunized. Because these two variants are so contagious, it's going to require an even higher percent of the population to be immunized in order to reach that herd immunity. And I've seen a few things this past week saying that instead of the 60 to 70 percent range, we're now talking 80 to 90 percent of the population needing to be immunized. Um, we need that percent immunized up there, and we also need to lower the infection rates before there, we have large gatherings. So I'm just reminding people to please be responsible, <laughs> protect yourself and your neighbors, um, wear a mask, socially distance, wash your hands, avoid those poorly ventilated areas and crowds, and also please get vaccinated. Um, following these recommendations will help us return to normal sooner and get our businesses back because people will be um, less scared to get to go out. So that's all for today. Hopefully well, next week will be better. Well, thank you, Bonnie. It's great to, to get those updates. Now, you know, you talked about the east side of the state having those um, you know, those variants have been found in, in the Brookings County and other areas of the state. Is that just limited to east side of South Dakota or does that kind of branch off into the surrounding states as well? You know? Oh, it, it is in the surrounding states. Minnesota has quite a few variants. Um, and it just, the, the ones that have been identified in South Dakota, I think the majority of them are on the eastern side of the state. If you, I, it's hard to tell how many how much of the variants are out there because the Department of Health is testing some samples, not all of them, and it's not clear how many samples they actually test per week. And do they randomly take them from Brookings or do they randomly take them from all over the state? You know, it's it's their way of testing for these variants isn't really out there as far as how they're doing it. And so it's really not possible to get a good idea of what percent of the cases could be the UK variant or how, you know, there's, it's very likely that we have more than one South African variant in Brookings. I mean, that's what they've detected but they're running about 150 samples a week, I think. So that, you know, is, is a very small sample when you're talking about the entire state. So it's, at this point in time, we don't know, I guess is the best way to say that. We just know they're there. We don't know to what extent. Well, thank you so much for all of your insight on that, Bonnie. For those of you that are watching, if you have a question for Bonnie, please email us at that email address listed in the description of this video. And also I've included a link to uh, the South Dakota Department of Health vaccine uh, link so you can see where you can go get vaccinated. So um, until next week, uh, be safe and take care. Thanks, Chelsea. Thanks.